protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's the beginning of a new week, Monday, March 19, 2012. Now, as you know, the InfoWars nightly news is in the middle of a big pit stop. Uh, we're pulled over on the side of the road to change the tires, to refuel the tank, to make this program more hard-hitting, twice as concentrated as the competing brands to make it uh, a truth telling extravaganza in a shorter period of time so you can share it with your friends your contacts share it with everybody spread the word that we have to restore the republic by reigning in the tyrants you know who they are we've been covering them but we're going to make it even more clear for those of you who haven't quite woken up yet uh, we want to thank as always our great supporters our audience uh, especially those prisonplanet.tv subscribers who make all of this possible we do not have corporate sponsors we're not liked by the mainstream we're not liked by the big foundations and corporations that we attack nightly on this program so we do depend on you and if you think this is a valuable program we appreciate even more of your support if you don't support us financially please help us get the word out now uh, we're of course trying to up our game we're trying to find new reporters we're re reworking graphics packages and uh, we're working with the staff we have now so that everyone has a chance to get a break and so that they're fresh and hard-hitting when they do come on the program now, with that said, we have one of our most powerful InfoWars nightly news episodes uh, since its inception, and that is from January 24th, 2012. Probably the highlight of this episode is Alex's long interview with Russell Means, who is, of course, a prominent Native American activist. We've interviewed him before in special long form. That's up on PrisonPlanet.tv. We went to uh, the Pine Ridge Reservation up there where he lives. And, uh, but in this program, Russell Means really comes on to talk about the overall decline of American culture, how really everyone is on the reservation now. Everyone is headed for that concentration camp, whether in metaphor or reality, as global imperialism rises, as tyranny spreads globally, as everyone gets taken over, as the former minority groups who were kind of isolated and vulnerable have already been largely hit. Now everyone's going to take a hit. And you see that in the news segments from this program as well, as Alex covers a, a wide array of statements from George Soros. George Soros, who says, get ready for class warfare in America. George Soros, who says, I'm having a good crisis. How's your crisis? I've been speculating up and down the bubble. And now George Soros, who's called for censoring the web. He specifically called to police conspiracy theorists, and Alex just goes ape in this episode, of course. There's a lot of other topics, including Ron Paul's money bomb to end the TSA. Yes, he's still the only candidate who would take on real programs, who would try to shut down real tyranny within our government and try to rein it back in. The only person uh, with any common sense. Anyway, you've got statements from people like Rush Limbaugh saying, Ron Paul sounds like a terrorist. He sounds like the Islamic uh, extremist. You've got talks about how SOPA and PIPA and comparable legislation are still alive, how the tyrants who want to take over the Internet and end free speech there so they can selectively rein it in and shut it down are not stopping. You've got weird technological police state developments like the red spotlight to mark pre-crime suspects that they unveiled in New Jersey. We covered that earlier in the year. You've also got military exercises in Los Angeles. You've got Monsanto saying there's no need or even value in testing uh, genetically modified foods for humans. No need to test soil and green either. You already know it's made of humans. You've got uh, Monsanto also being connected with infertility through its Roundup herbicide agent. And you've got all kinds of other stuff, reports on old uh, dinosaur nests uh, filled with uh, 190 million year old eggs and a whole lot more. Of course, among uh, as part of this episode, you've got the powerful Darren McBreen, man on the street. He talks to people about mandatory vaccinations. 
Should we have ever gotten to this point? Is it okay for students to be forced to get vaccinated, to go to university? Is it okay for military people, uh, for nurses and medical workers? Is it okay to tell you you have to take a flu shot when they put cancer agents in it and when it's got a live virus in there and when it's not even proven to stop the flu uh, or even to be effective against it as they really just guess at what the strain is going to be? Uh, so all that and more is on this episode. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to spread the word. And we'll be back in hard-hitting form next week with the all-new, revamped InfoWars Nightly News. Stay with us. Thanks for watching. We are locked and loaded. It is Tuesday, January 24th, 2012, and Russell Means, American Indian icon um, who says he's defeated cancer. I know when he first was told he had cancer, he couldn't even barely breathe. They were getting ready to give him a tracheotomy. Uh, he's back and looks healthier than ever, and we're going to be talking to him in an extended, in-depth interview coming up in the second segment. But first, I want to get into the news this evening. Now, George Soros is at Davos this year, and he is talking about a total collapse of society and acting like he and his cohorts had nothing to do with it. He now wants to be our savior. But before we get into that whole report, I thought we would look at the man, George Soros uh, himself, who's talked about three years ago having a uh, good crisis and all the rest of it, because uh, different people that work for him and different mouthpieces uh, are calling for basically shutting down and arresting anybody that criticizes uh, the government, and they're pushing uh, this uh, new version of authoritarianism on the public. Now, there's a bit of a mystery here. I know that a decade ago and a year ago and six months ago, I was able to go to YouTube or Google and before that, I had a VHS copy of it. A listener sent me, we can't find around here, of George Soros on 60 Minutes, uh, what, December 20th, uh, 1998, talking about how he went around with uh, his guardian, who he'd been given to, to you know hide him with because the guardian was reportedly not Jewish, so that he couldn't be picked up by the Nazis. And then that he would go around to the different uh, Jewish uh, homes, uh, helping catalog their property and land, which the Nazis then took. And in his spin, he says that's okay because they were taking the property. He wasn't, but he was helping them. So that's like saying if I help knock down your door and then step aside for you to go in and rob somebody that I'm not involved. And the mystery here is... There are hundreds of transcripts of this on news sites, you name it. I have seen the full interview many times of him on 60 Minutes, and it is gone from the BitTorrents, from YouTube, from Google, from every video site. Today on the radio, when I couldn't find it, I put the call out to our millions of listeners to find it. They couldn't. It has been esponged. There's this one audio clip that's only part of the transcript 
we were able to find on YouTube. Audio of the video. So uh, he does not want people seeing this. Now, I find it interesting because Soros will play some of these clips later. Is constantly comparing everybody to the Nazis. George Bush, which I actually have to agree with, but it's true, and uh, others. But then gets mad if he gets compared to it. Because he's always you know, funding left-wing organizations that claim they're for freedom, but then when you really bore down into it, uh, he's pushing a lot of different forms of uh, authoritarian oppression, in my view. But looking at the transcript of this, and we'll put it back up before we play the audio clip of what we do have, uh, Croft uh, is saying to him, and you watch lots of people get shipped off to the death camps. Mr. Soros, right, I was 14 years old, and I would say that's when my character was made. In what way? That one should think ahead, one should understand and anticipate events, and when one is threatened, it was a very tremendous threat of evil. I mean, it was a very personal experience of evil. Croft, my understanding is, is that you went out with the protector of yours, who swore that you were his adopted godson. Yes, yes, Soros says. Croft went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property from Jews. Mr. Soros, yes, that's right, yes. And then he goes on with no feeling of guilt, no. I, I mean, I've seen this video, and it's gone. And the reason I raise this is in looking for this again today, I find media matters who's told me on the phone when they've called me as reporters before, when they openly work for Obama and others, that they've never gotten money from Soros, and then I go to the federal filing papers online, and there's Soros, million bucks here, you know, money there. I mean, I've had their head people call me, and I'm like, you work for George Soros, and they go, no, we don't, no, we don't. I'm like, yes, you do, and the guy starts laughing at me. So it's super creepy, because I'm not defending Glenn Beck here, but look at this. Beck falsely accuses Soros of Nazi collaboration on Crystal Knot anniversary. And then you read into their article, and give me a document cam shot on this if you can. They've got the exact same quotes of the transcript I just read. Went out, in fact, and helped confiscate the confiscation of property from Jews. Yes, that's right. Yes. No feelings of guilt? No. I, I mean... This is the level of mind control, where the TSA is on video sticking their hands down people's pants and then going, we're not sticking hands down pants. Or their own reports say the radiation is giving people cancer, and they go, our report shows no cancer, and the report shows cancer. This is this weird psychological warfare thing they do where they just in, engage in all this bizarre behavior. And, and, and I mean, I could see that sliver of truth there, that grain of truth that, well, I was 14 and they'd have killed me if I wouldn't have done it. But, but still, it's technically collaborating with the Nazis. I mean, that is what it is. And listen, if you would have come out after that and, and, and done things that were humanitarian, then people could forgive you. But instead, you always claim you're humanitarian when you push the nastiest globalist garbage I've ever seen. I mean, I do believe in second chance for people that are juveniles because a lot of people, including myself, did bad things. I mean, I stole beer a couple times out of golf court, golf cart ice chest. Uh, maybe when a bully started a fight with me and I got him down, I stomped him a little too hard and put him in the hospital. Maybe I should have held back. But that isn't in the same universe as the type of thing Soros has done. So I wanted to just cover some backstory on that for a moment before I get into his latest statements, the latest things he's up to. But, but, but here's a clip of him on CNN, a, a grainy YouTube clip of him on CNN talking about George Bush and similarities to Nazis. Uh, and, 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 and of course, uh, he was getting into the way they use propaganda. How about secret arrest? How about torture? How about planting weapons on groups or, or lying about Iraq and staging false flags? I mean, George W. Bush and what he did was Nazi. But Soros even kind of waffles on this. Here it is. Now, when a lot of people hear comparisons between President Bush and Nazis and communists, they're going to say, George Soros, you've gone over the top. Yeah. Uh, you actually picked up the most incendiary part of the book. And uh, I am very careful to draw a, a clear distinction between the Nazi regime and our, uh, our open society, because we are a democracy. 
uh, but there are some similarities in the propaganda methods which I pointed out. Okay, uh, now we're going to get here in a moment to the only clip we can find of the audio, not the video of him on 60 Minutes, where he talks about it being this great time of his life. Uh, you know, they're surviving during this great time of crisis and the incredible confidence they had um, basically <laughs> running around helping the Nazis. And this happened not just in Hungary and Poland, in Germany and other areas, actually. If the Jews didn't pay protection money uh, to the Nazis, they were not allowed to get out of the country. But they were not allowed to pay protection money and, and go to New York or other places. They had to go to Israel. And it turned out there were a bunch of Zionists, this is a big dirty secret, who actually profited from robbing their fellow Jews and not letting them escape to New York and putting pressure on New York and, well, more importantly, England. New York did allow, the United States did allow some people to, to, to come in, but England wouldn't let any of them in. And it was a conspiracy theory in the news uh, pre-post-World uh, War II during the last few years to say that Hitler was exterminating people. So you know, that's one of the reasons today people then go around and say that Hitler didn't kill any Jews because that was already being said in the news to anybody that pointed out that Hitler was killing Jews. And, and Hitler was killing Jews and a lot of other people. Uh, and, and there have been some Jewish professors and others in the U.S. that have written books uh, on this subject. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, you always have mafias over racial groups or religious groups who will work with outside oppressors uh, to kind of be the minders and the managers of all of this. Uh, and it's uh, truly disgusting. Truly disgusting. Uh, and, and in fact, again, we have this short little clip. This is all we can find. This is the only audio of the video out there. We read you the transcript of the really damning stuff. Uh, but uh, here he is on 60 Minutes. It was actually probably the happiest year of my life, that year of German occupation. For me, it was a very positive experience. It's a, a strange thing, you know, because you see incredible suffering around you, and, and in fact, you are, you are in considerable danger uh, yourself. But you, you're 14 years old, and you don't believe that it can actually touch you. You have a belief in yourself, your belief in your father. It's a very uh, happy-making, exhilarating experience. And while we're at it, we'll queue up a clip of him at Davos a few years ago calling for you know, this New World Order and China being a big part of that, which of course they are. The Chinese Communist leaders fit into the authoritarian model quite nicely. Before I get into why I'm raising George Soros today, it's just that when he talks about collapse and martial law and all this stuff, folks better listen because he's only going to start making noises about how terrible it is when he thinks it's getting very, very close. And I know Russell Means uh, wants to talk about that. He, uh, coming up in the interview we're going to be doing with him uh, later, I asked him, what, what do you want to cover first? He said economic collapse, hyperinflation. So we'll be talking to that uh, on that subject coming up. Right now, let's go ahead and uh, go to that clip of George Soros on the New World Order. What sort of a financial deal should Obama be seeking to strike when he travels to China next month? No, I think this would be the time because you really need to bring China into the creation of a new uh, um, uh, world order, financial world order. Okay, so my issue with Soros is he's financed all these color revolutions in former Eastern Europe, and they replace kind of the Russian quasi-puppets with Western puppets that are even more oppressive. Not a fan of the Soviet tyranny, been against it my whole life. Not a fan of some of the Islamic oppression. The, but the point is the West is bringing in a more scientific form. And George Soros funds anti-gun groups. He's always funding groups demonizing the free speech of libertarians and constitutionalists. Uh, he's got his different organizations writing articles about me almost every day, twisting and, 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 you know, dissembling things, and then running around and acting like a victim when anybody talks about him. Uh, now, continuing here, uh, going back to the Daily Beast articles, what we got on the subject of Soros, he's come out and uh, we have an article at Infowars.com that uh, breaks it down in more detail, and you know, basically talks about economic collapse, martial law, political crackdowns, and he says this is the most evil, to quote him, time of his life. 
uh, even more dangerous probably than World War II. Uh, and this is coming from a guy who broke the Bank of England. This is coming from a guy uh, who is incredibly ruthless. You know, that's the thing, is that he didn't stop his predatory actions after he was 14, 15 years old, collaborating uh, with the Nazis. Uh, continuing, again, I wanted to show you the old quote of him coming out and saying, I'm having a very good crisis. So he's having a very good crisis a few years ago, but now that the collapse is getting near and he's saying he doesn't invest people's money anymore because it's, it, it's too dangerous and you know, the, the, this horrible time is coming. The system's been getting ready for collapse ever since they got rid of Glass-Steagall 13 years ago and began the implosion of the world economy. They lit the fuse that's leading to this, and they want total power and control out of it. But George Soros and his media groups for decades have been demonizing anybody that ever dares point out that we're being conquered by finance capital and derivatives fraudsters. And here's another article with Soros-funded and, and supported people. Not just in the White House, Cass Sunstein uh, calling for arresting people that don't believe in global warming, man-made global warming, who calls for shutting down people's websites, uh, who disagree with the government. Disagreeing with them is a conspiracy theory. Continuing on that front, Soros' mouthpiece calls on Google to police conspiracy theorists. And it's funny, maybe we should pull this up. Google has announced today, it's big news, uh, that in their terms of service now, you have no privacy. And I was talking to some of the IT people. They said one of the IT guys came in and said he was searching Google, and it popped up with a thing of, hey, your buddy, Max, was looking at this Austin company, and he thought it was interesting. Google's now doing what Facebook does. And Max said he had done some work for that company two years ago, and Google had a complete database and his name attaching him to it. They can put in fake info to set you up. Uh, information can be misunderstood by people. The list goes on and on. And yeah, you've got the new rules from Google, but, but, but if you just type into Google News, uh, Google changes terms of service. I mean, it is mega big. You're going to see thousands of uh, articles uh, uh, dealing with this if you just type in Google changes terms of service and says that you have no, no, as in zero, rights to any of the information, and they're saying you can't opt out. Here it is. If it, well, we can put it on screen. Uh, Google to update privacy policy to cover wider data use. And look at how they just report that incredible info like it's no big deal. So one of my IT guys went and read the new policy, and it says that you have absolutely no right to anything you have ever done on Google. We're going to sell it and use it however we want. In fact, see that link? Hammered by critics for the way it integrated Google's Plus post into search results. Google said that it had been working on new policies for a long time and that recent events had nothing to do with the timing. And it, it just goes on from there. Now, remember when Schmidt, the head of Google, said a few years ago, he was the outgoing head at the time, he said, hey, we're not going to be don't be evil anymore. You better not do something on the Internet if you don't want everybody knowing about it. Well, wait a minute. I do stuff that's private in my house. I don't want people knowing about it because it's none of your business. Whether it's in bed with my wife or cooking eggs or, or picking my nose. It's my house. It's my life. It's not, I got something to hide. And I go use your stinking service to look up news. And let's say I'm doing searches on White House prostitution rings, which I've done. And then I find names involved, and I go search connections to underage callboy ring going through the White House, which was in the Washington Times, and Barney Frank. And imagine what the, the system can do taking just that search out of context and acting like I'm actually out there looking for that. But let's go one further. It's already happening. You visit something on Facebook. By accident, it pops up, takes over your computer. That's now in a database that you went to that site. But now when your wife's searching the computer and Google knows that you went there for whatever reason, that's popping up. The point is it's so sick, it's so creepy, 
and it's full of data errors on top of it. I mean, I cannot even begin to explain to you how sick this is. I mean, look, the guys just searched it during the break. There it is. Boom. Homosexual prostitution ring. VIPs, Reagan, Bush, all of them. And I can show you articles, the underage call boys, you know, all these administrations. There's the credit card receipts. I'm searching that information. Now, when I'm logging in to get a hotel somewhere else, any of it, it knows my entire history. And this information can be absolutely misused and taken out of context. And then meanwhile, we've got the Soros mouthpiece calling for web censorship. It goes on um, that his own biography says he's a well-connected insider, uh, and it goes on how the uh, Internet is a useful tool for people who deny global warming as well as anti-vaccination movement, calling on Google to provide a socially responsible uh, treatment that would marginalize such beliefs by amended search results. So drive us down off the searches, shut down our speech, and have their little notices pop up on us. That's already going on when they say a site is infected. They set the precedent where, oh, well, we're protecting you from an infected site. Now they're saying it's infected info. Or they just push you off the searches altogether. Google's already done that two years ago. InfoWars Prison Planet, top news organizations, huge, millions of visitors a day now. Not in Google News search, not Google Web, Google News, delisted, never been an article there for two years already happening. They're already doing this. And Google's admitted that they take stuff off YouTube when the government, quote, says that it's anti-government or critical of the government. Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, they already helped China and others build their big electronic Berlin Wall, the Great Wall of China. They've been involved in this from the very start. And we've got all these different people from this Stanford scholar uh, and all of them doing this. That's what SOPA is really for, and they use the excuse of copyright. They're saying even a word, like if you criticize Fox News, you can't say the word Fox News without their authorization to even write about them. This is a new dark age by the criminal class and their fellow traveler servants. And now I've gone off into a rant. It's just that this is the type of real issue that we're facing. They cannot deal with our information. They cannot deal with us exposing them. And so they're, now they're coming after our free speech. And Google, ladies and gentlemen, has been saving your searches forever. Now they're saying they're going to retroactively use them, sell them to everybody. Yeah, don't be evil. They are evil. Okay, let's continue uh, here uh, getting into other news. You know about Rush Limbaugh. And you know that yesterday the Hill newspaper reported that Jay Carney, White House spokesman, said, hey, look. We, we think the TSA did a great job with Senator Rand Paul. Detain him for two hours, do whatever you want. You know, groping children is a wonderful thing. Because if they can beta test martial law in the airports and touching your body and treating you like a prisoner, they can do it on the highway. In fact, this just broke at Infowars.com. We discovered federal documents. In fact, we can go to this after this story. It's not in my news lineup here, but I meant to I'll tell you guys about it. Where these federal documents are announcing that the feds are going to hire all your local police, spy on all citizens, and they're saying we're moving away from fighting terror to just surveilling everyone. And again, if you go to, there it is, top story, Aaron Dykes. Shock docs, total federalization of police under new Homeland Security mission. Mission creep, DHS agency transitions from fighting terrorism to taking over homeland Hiring police officers. It, and it's everything I already told you, but it's all codified. Just threat fusion centers, totally spying, naked body scanners on street corners, giant telescreens saying report on your neighbors, checkpoints, weird Orwellian spotlights on you, microphones everywhere, your children trained to spy on you. I mean, you read this thing. And, it, and it's all the former national security advisors and homeland security heads over their own private companies that are actually going to run this domestically. And it's the new scholarships, the new jobs, it's everything. And meanwhile, what is Rush Limbaugh saying? What is Rush Limbaugh doing? 
Well, you know, Rand Paul gets detained for two hours, we now learn, barked at, screamed at, because he wouldn't let a pot belly grab his genitals. Turns out they have the metal detectors where they beep when they want to search you. This has happened to me where they go, well, it selected you for a random search. But I've talked to my sources inside the government. They actually hit a button when they want to search you. That now happens when I fly out of Austin. They come over and go, hey, you're a troublemaker. Get over here. I'm going to show you who's got the power. The guy actually told me, you know, troublemaker. And I go, where are you going? He goes, I know who you are. And I'm like, you are actually a sack of crap. I mean, I didn't. you're a pathetic little worm who doesn't like my political speech, so you're going to act all powerful with me. Man, I tell you, this world is, is run by guys that can't get women and who are just losers and hate everybody. But side issue. The point is, is that this sack of crap, I didn't know they could stack it that high. I went to this whole power trip with me. Well, now Limbaugh, Ron Paul sounds like an Islamic terrorist. And he goes on to say, well, they've stopped Rand Paul, but I think, you know, it'd be reasonable if they stopped Ron Paul because he might be a terrorist. And again, it's like it's a joke, but it's not. This is, this is the way they're shifting the whole homeland security system now to the white Al-Qaeda and all their TV ads and to domestic groups. And, and all the guys in the ads are wearing John Deere hats. You know, again, they sold the good old boys on taking people's rights because it was just for the brown people. And now they're selling everybody on taking the rights of the white people. And it's like that Jet Spratt could eat no fat and his wife could eat no lean. So in between them, they licked the, the, the platter clean. You got the white folks saying, well, I'm not really racist, but the brown people are scary. Secretly arrest them. And then they tell the uh, brown folks, hey, the white people, you know, the, you know the, you're not really racist, but they are kind of scary. They're all terrorists. And, and again, they just all sell it in a balkanized way. And so it's this whole rollout by the narcotics trafficking, criminal, gun running, fast and furious, scumbag government growing opium publicly in Afghanistan that's stolen tens of trillions and is starting World War III. Let's go ahead and go to that Rush Pimp Ba clip. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul has been detained by the TSA at the Nashville airport. He set off the alarms and refused a pat down, so they detained him. He sent his dad a note about it, and it's become a big story out there. Now, if this had been Ron Paul, you couldn't really blame the TSA. You have to admit, Ron Paul almost sounds like an Islamic terrorist sometimes. But this wasn't. <laughs> gotcha. Let's go back here. This was Rand. That's good. Uh, now, Rand didn't set off alarms. When you go through them now, they'll beep in a Pavlovian way to make you think you did something wrong. And they go, oop, the scanner chose you. It's a different beep than the metal. Because... I went through no belt, no shoes, through the athlete's foot, you know, through all the disease at the Austin airport, and it beeps. And they go, oh, it's chosen you for a random search. It's all this Pavlovian buzzers, beepers, pot bellies there to stick their hands down your pants. Ooh, Miss USA, it's over for you. TSA workers have gone public and admitted, oh, and a hot woman's going through. They got managers there. They go, naked body scanner. It doesn't matter. Americans will sacrifice everything on the altar of slavery. I mean, it's so creamy and good to have your children abused by these people. It's like a sacrament of land of the coward, home of the ostrich, home of the slave, home of the head in the sand. And so just enjoy. Take extra vaccines. Enjoy the highest cancer rate in the world and growing. Okay, uh, but uh, Ron Paul has slammed uh, the TSA and announced a money bomb. He slams out of control police state and uh, uses it to try to raise money to fight uh, the tyranny, he says, donate so he can become president to end the TSA. Why are the average senators and, and House members for this? Because they've stolen so much money in insider trading and good old boy deals in Congress. They all got private jets and are exempt from all this, just like Limbaugh. Okay, continuing, here's another one. Ron Paul ignored in GOP debate once again. Congressman was afforded less than six minutes, less than everybody else. Uh, and the only question he got was, when are you going to drop out of the race? So that's all part of the criminals molding reality. Hey, to all the people who support the system and think you're on the winning team, you're the people that are actually going to throw yourselves out because you're so overconfident and hubris-filled and so busy stealing everything, uh, not uh, tied down, uh, that you're going to destroy yourself. So I'm sad you're doing this, but, you know, you are what you are. Uh, continuing, Monsanto has come out and said there's no need for or value in testing the safety 
of GM in humans. Now, there's all these hundreds of studies, conservatively, in lab rats and in other uh, mammals showing every major GMO crop, not just Monsanto's, the corn, you name it, sterilizing them, organ failure, absolute hell on earth. And we're starting to see this happen in humans. Our life cycle is longer than a rat, so it takes more time to uh, see this unfold. And Monsanto, who controls the courts and everybody, just says, hey, and it's got their people in every major federal position over them. You know, they say, just don't worry about it. They say, it's no big deal. Just trust us. We care about you. You know, they were also the makers of Agent Orange and Aspartame. And we woke folks up to it killing people in the sodas. So now they just put it in all the even sugar gum. You, there's no way to get away with it because Monsanto cares about you. Uh, continuing, um, their uh, best-selling herbicide Roundup has been linked to infertility. Really, you think, you think an herbicide sprayed on plants that have been made to be resistant so they absorb it and then you eat it? You think that might lead to infertility? I mean, we do have the lowest infertility in the world. It's dropping. 87% of the sperm are dead or, or, or can't swim. I mean, pretty soon we'll be totally sterile, but hey, that's okay. Everything's fine. Government loves you. Uh, now, we talked about this a little bit on the radio today, but red spotlights to mark pre-crime uh, suspects. And they say, you know, Homeland Security, we're face scanning, we're reading your license plate. And, 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 and the AP in the clip actually says, hey, this is a great thing uh, because it's actual pre-crime. And so now you'll just disappear because the computer says you're a terrorist programmed by a real terrorist. So we've got a uh, clip of that. The directed red lights will be attached to existing surveillance cameras and can shoot a light beam a full city block away. If a police officer monitoring one of the city's many high-def cameras sees a crime about to occur, like someone about to get mugged, they will remotely bathe the would-be perpetrator in red light. The police are observing you, the police are recording you, and the police are responding. What, in case of drug dealers bringing in drugs that the feds didn't bring in for the local police to distribute? Or maybe if somebody's selling guns illegally that weren't bought from the ATF to blame the Second Amendment? I mean, I don't know about that New Jersey town, but most big cities are narcotics run. And the police chief gets a little cut. Nobody minds. They live in a $2 million house on a salary that you couldn't live in a $500,000 house. And they keep the drugs illegal to keep the prices high, and they let the crackheads rob your house to get the stereo and computer because that's their tax. They got to get the money to buy the government crack that's then laundered through a big globalist bank. And I mean, here in Austin, you can watch the city cameras. The public has access. I can drive right now to East 11th Street and show you crack dealers and show you yuppies pulling up buying crack cocaine. Nobody's stopping it. All, I mean, I mean, they're putting body scanners now on street corners that passively look at your naked body. I mean, it's all just a bunch of terrorists. And everybody knows that you scum. All right, that's enough of those terrorists. Let's go ahead and go to this next piece here. This is out of KFI Radio. L.A. military exercise, a joint military training exercise, will be held evenings in downtown Los Angeles through Thursday, working with the Los Angeles Police Department with helicopters and more. Yeah, you know, the foreign banks hijacked America. They know we're waking up. They're getting ready for total depression and implosion, and they're training the military for war with the American people. So that's what America has basically signed on to, and that's what our military uh, has been trained to do. Moving right along here, uh, SOPA and PIPA fully alive, and a new bill joins them. And again, I said it was a victory that they claimed they were backing off, but that's always a military tactic is to say you're backing off and then launch an attack during the ceasefire. Again, they have nothing but contempt for a public that's let them commit this many crimes, so they're on a piranha-like rampage. A deja vu uh, in the form of open, the new anti-privacy bill, an alternative to SOPA and PIPA, brought forward by Representative Daryl Issa, who's helping cover up Fast and Furious, because when they brought up the magic word that Bush was involved, boy, he shut that down. And 24 co-sponsors introduced the online Protection and Enforcement Digital Trade, or H.R. 3782, that does all the same censorship that George Soros' minions and everybody else wants. Continuing here in this gargantuan uh, issue of InfoWars Nightly News, Sun hurls strong geomagnetic storm towards Earth. Why don't the control freaks just give us a law to stop that? Uh, when it hit us, it's like a big battering ram that pushes the Earth's magnetic field. 
And they go on to break down the fact that the energy causes Earth's magnetic field to fluctuate. So the sun, the main driver of our atmosphere, is going pretty wild right now. Uh, continuing, oldest dinosaur nestling site ever found contains hundreds of 190 million year old eggs. Yeah, for not even very much money, I bought my dad a prehistoric crocodile skull uh, out of Morocco. And it's just, they are digging up just hundreds of thousands of different prehistoric lizards and dinosaur uh, skeletons and eggs. Very, very interesting. Uh, the excavation site in South Africa belonged to the um, prosauropod dinosaur <laughs> and predates other nesting sites by at least 100 million years. So truly, truly mind-blowing. And continuing with science and tech news, to spy a black hole, astronomers will build a virtual globe-spanning telescope. The thing we will actually see is light just barely escaping from a black hole, said Dan Marone, a University of Arizona astronomer involved in the new project called the Event Horizon Telescope. Event Horizon is a good horror movie, by the way. <laughs> Astronomers call black holes the most baffling objects in the universe. The power of gravity of these collapsed stars is everything around them, and no one has ever taken a picture of one. The reason no single telescope is powerful enough to spy one. The black hole, the center of Milky Way, is a we in the sky as a baseball on the moon. To see it, astronomers will synchronize a network of telescopes into an Earth-sized super telescope. I don't know how it's an earth size, even if they synchronize all the telescopes, but whatever, I'm sure it means something my feeble brain can't understand. All right, we're going to go to break and uh, come back with Russell Means, who's battled back from cancer. They told him he wouldn't survive long, and he didn't go with the chemotherapy and radiation. He'll tell us how he's beaten it so far. Just incredible information coming up, but I want to give you a quote from Adolf Hitler, since we were talking about authoritarians and people that use financial crises to gain control of society, like George Soros, thought I'd give you a 1934 quote. What luck for the rulers that men do not think. All propaganda must be so popular. And on such an intellectual level that even the most stupid of those towards whom it is directed will understand it. Terrorism is the best political weapon for nothing drives people harder than the fear of sudden death. Speaking of Hitler, Hitler was big on medical tyranny. That's the first groups that he went after and oppressed was the handicapped, the mentally infirm. Uh, it was called racial hygiene. He was also big on forced inoculation. And now in the U.S., California has passed an unconstitutional law saying they'll shoot your kids up with vaccines without your consent. And, of course, we now have the American Medical Association coming out last week and putting a paper out saying, you know, the public's not taking our shots. The big pharma pays us to push. Let's just make it mandatory. So our very own Darren McBreen, InfoWars Nightly News reporter, went out on the street in Austin, Texas, to ask the public, hey, do you think the government, lobbied by foreign corporations in many cases, the vaccines made in China, should force you to take vaccines? And they're always adding new vaccines to the list. This is in our medical tyranny section. We'll talk about it more with Russell Means coming up after the break. Here's Darren McBrain. Should it be mandatory that all students who attend school be vaccinated? That I'm not sure. I would say yes. I would think it's a good thing, but mandatory, I guess that could like violate some people's rights. No, it shouldn't be mandatory for students to have vaccinations in order to attend public school. Uh, no, I don't think it should be mandatory to get vaccinated before attending college. I do believe they should be vaccinated. Yeah, I think it should be voluntary. And tell us about, you said your sister chooses not to? Uh, yeah, she's in Portland, Oregon. She has three kids, so she chooses not to vaccinate. Mm -hmm. um, and she actually, like, actively fights against not vaccinating children, not having it as a requirement. I think it's always everyone's decision, though. I don't think you can force anyone to get vaccinated. Vaccines, I don't trust them. I don't get my flu vaccine. Interesting development in California. They just passed a bill legalizing children consent for vaccines, if you could believe it. So 12 years old and above, they can actually consent to vaccinations for Gardasil and uh, Hepatitis B. What, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I think that's a bit early in life to um, be putting this decision on kids. I don't, I don't think uh, minors have should have the uh, ability to make these decisions. It's up to the parents. Well, I think children 
over the age of 12 probably don't have all the um, mental facilities to make a decision like that on their own. 12 seems a little young. Um, I don't know how you can make an informed decision when you're 12. Like, I don't even think I would know anything about vaccinations when I was 12, so. Well, they don't let kids do anything else without parental knowledge. Why would they do that? I mean, that's ridiculous. Parents are responsible for their children. It should definitely be the parents' choice over the, the students. Totally the parents' decision what they do with their children, where they go to school, and what vaccinations they get. Do you think that uh, any of the vaccines pose a risk? Potentially, yes. Starting January 1st, California minors as young as 12 years old have the right to get preventative treatment for sexually transmitted diseases without parental permission. That includes the HPV vaccines, Gardasil and Cerevix, which help prevent many strains of cervical cancer. A group of children are going to go to school who have not had the vaccine and they are going to be shown a film. And they tell you, children, we're just going to show you this film. And uh, they don't tell them that it's sponsored by the pharmaceutical industry, but they will show them a film and it will show the horrors of cervical cancer. And those children will be frightened, deliberately frightened, into getting the vaccine. Don't tell your parents, kids, but you get this vaccine because this is going to happen to you if you don't get it. This is a $50 billion a year industry. And it's time that we expose what these merchants of death are doing. Their vaccines don't work, and they've been linked to killing people and maiming others. Big Pharma, obviously they're making billions of dollars, so do they have an incentive to push these on the, the people? Oh, yeah, this is all big business. More money. Yeah. I have my suspicions about, about pharmaceutical companies influencing political, you know, the same political sway, bills being passed to force people to get vaccines. Every piece of information that is in accordance with that vaccine side effects, I mean, the, the good side effects and the bad side effects, everything should be made public or available to the, the patients so they know what they're getting themselves into. I would say do actual research into the drugs instead of hearsay. You know, you can't force anyone to do anything that they don't want to do. So the, at the end of the day, I don't think you should be forcing that at all. Awesome. Yeah, I'm signing these evil 1770 six flags. Doesn't get any more out of control than that, ladies and gentlemen. It's pretty un-American what we're doing here at InfoWars.com. I mean, not only are we promoting liberty, but we're selling 1776 flags. Now that is Al-Qaeda. The American people, for too long, have been an irresponsible free people. And even generation to generation has it become less free. They don't recognize it. They have lost the ability of critical thought. In order to regain c critical thought, all you have to do is read your constitution and then look at the laws that govern you especially from the federal perspective. It's unconscionable to allow your freedoms to be taken away decade after decade after decade, year after year. And I'm very proud of this, by the way. My nation, the Lakota, were the first nation to militarily defeat the United States of America on the field of battle. And that resulted in the 1868 Sioux Treaty. Be that as it may, what has happened after they economically forced us into these prisoner war camps by destroying our food supply and our, our, our right of passage in our own land, they confined us to these, and then they began practicing and perfecting their colonial tactics. What has happened is now America, because of the irresponsibility of your forebearers and the irresponsibility of yourselves, you are now on a one huge Indian reservation. All policies, all policies were bred and born and birthed on, the, on an Indian reservation. 
and then export it to the world, and now comes, comes back on the backs of the American people. You have a near-perfect document. In the words of uh, Benjamin Franklin in 1744 to a collection of colonists discussing freedom, he said to them, and I quote, if a nation to the north can form a near perfect union that has endured for centuries, why cannot we form a more perfect union? Unquote. So they're talking about the Iroquois Confederacy and that's where the Constitution comes from. Because in 1988, on the eve of the 200-year anniversary of uh, the Constitution, it was a unanimous thank you by the Congress of the United States. They sent in writing to the Six Nations Iroquois Confederacy, thanking them for their input into the Constitution and the formation of the United States of America. So you see, the Constitution is Indian law, and that's why I love it. That's a short excerpt from Welcome to the Reservation with Russell Means. Last year, some of my uh, crew uh, traveled uh, to the Lakota Nation uh, to talk to the iconic uh, actor and uh, political activist, uh, human rights activist, uh, and I think it's one of the best you know, you know, overall works out there, really showing you what Russell Means stands for, not what the controlled corporate uh, media and uh, others say. And I'm uh, proud of the work that uh, we did with that and the great job that Russell did. Of course, he really doesn't need much of an introduction. The LA Times has described him as the most famous American Indian since Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse. Uh, he, of course, led the 71-day armed uh, um, uh, takeover of the sacred grounds of Wounded Knee, while the FBI and others poured in tens of thousands of rounds of ammo at them. Uh, he also uh, joined the longest walk in 78 to protest the uh, new tide of anti-Indian uh, legislation, including the forced sterilization of Indian women. George Herbert Walker Bush headed all that up and then went to China to carry out the operation there. Uh, he also, of course, has been in dozens and dozens of famous movies and is an iconic individual. And he's helped uh, lead the movement for the uh, Lakota Nation to declare independence. And that's had a lot of success. And he has, the doctors told him you know, he was basically a goner. He's defeated cancer. Uh, just amazing. So there's so much to talk about with Russell. You know, right as we got him on here during the break, I said, what do you want to talk about? You know, the cancer, the, uh, the NDAA police state, the new wars, uh, you know, all the uh, things that are going on. Uh, and he said, well, I want to get into the upcoming economic collapse. And that's certainly uh, happening uh, right now. So we'll get into that first with Russell Means joining us from his home. Russell, great to have you on with us. Thank you. Great to be with you again. Uh, so much has happened, but uh, you predicted many years ago this economic implosion. It's here. You got criticized for not worshiping Obama. Now it's been proven that he's owned by the same people as Bush and others. Uh, you're being vindicated yet again, Russell. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't hard at all. It's pretty easy to figure out which way the America is going. It's... Uh, you know, it's, it's called a country founded on deceit will die by deceit. And with all the broken treaties, which is a violation of the Constitution, and then the ongoing violations of the Constitution against the American people starting in the 1870s, even before that, in the 1840s, when they, when they created the corporation, and then on to 1913, to to the New Deal, on and on and on. As we uh, go through American history, we see how they continue to put the handcuffs on American people. And now it's complete. We're a police state, no doubt about it. And, they, and the American people haven't risen up yet. I don't understand it and I condemn it, but you know, occupying a public park is not a meaningful strategy to get something done. It's, it's with the impending economic collapse, because based on the greed of the 1%, the Wall Streeters, 
are in collusion with the government and corporate America. You know, this year alone, now since Obama took over, we've had about a 24, 23% uh, inflation rate over the three years. Well, in the coming year, it's going to jump to 30% for this year. 30 added percent. The reasons why is because the United States of America has lost the ability of having the U.S. dollar be the international money utilized in all transactions on the international level of goods and services. Because of that, the Fed cannot continue printing money. They could only print money while the, everyone was exchanging their monies for U.S. dollars. So they could buy oil, they could buy raw materials, they could lend lease, et cetera, et cetera. But what we have now with the Fed printing funny money, that has no backing, and at the same time, it's a vicious little cycle up there in Wall Street. The Fed is buying T-bills, which are worthless, and then issuing money. So the, the trillion-dollar debt that everyone's talking about, yes, that hurts. It has to be dealt with immediately, but it's too late. It's too late. The coming 30% inflation rate is going to... What's going to happen in America? You're going to see trucks hijacked on the highway, food trucks. You're going to see chaos in the South, in the Northwest, all over America. No longer will immigration be an issue. No longer will anything else be an issue except the, the worst of times the worst of American times. And now you can't criticize the federal government without going disappearing, going to Guantanamo or some like prison. And speaking of Guantanamo, that policy was derived strictly from American Indian policy. It started in the Seminole Wars and it was continued with the Apache Wars and the wars with my people. We won. And of course, the deceit set in. All I'm saying right now is we know the history, we know the contemporary times, and yet, because of the impending collapse with the that cycle of money, of the Fed issuing money, that is why it's called funny money. It's called funny money because the dollar is no longer the international currency. Therefore, because of all other currencies being changed to dollars so they can buy goods and services throughout the international community, what we have now is people are, are, are creating alliances to buy with their own monies or with gold, or they're creating money like the Arab Emirates and, and, and the Middle East. They're start, the Arabs are starting to create their own currency. India just announced they're going to stop using the dollar. That's a big deal. Yes, they're buying their oil from Iran, and uh, it's, going, it's done with gold. Now, what's going to happen in America, because of this funny money, and it's a vicious cycle there inside uh, Wall Street, where the Fed is buying up worthless T-bills and then issuing money because they bought up all these savings and, these, uh, the, and then they're funding the banks with more money. It's just a vicious cycle that's suicidal. And that's why inflation's going to raise 30% this year alone versus the 24% under Obama in three years. So you see, the country's going to become a calamity of chaos. 
you're going to have trucks hijacked on the highway, food trucks hijacked on the highways. It's going to be a dangerous time in America, and it's going to begin at the end of this year. Well, as you know, uh, in Argentina 10 years ago or 11 years ago, the same thing happened. They were very wealthy, but they had the same inflation happen. And you know, you're always extremely well read. You're always up to the minute. Uh, the Davos meeting, as you know, the, the big global banksters are meeting in Europe, and they're actually saying, George Soros and others, that total collapse, worst time in history, worse than when George Soros was even involved as a trader in World War II. He's actually saying that. Uh, all these other big bankers are saying that, and uh, they've covered up the inflation so far, but you're right, it's now accelerating, and their answer is homeland security drills, uh, practicing to lock up the general public, practicing, uh, they're in the news again saying arrest people that criticize the government. Uh, they were detaining Rand Paul and, and, and groping Ron Paul at the airport. And Rush Limbaugh said, well, they don't want war, so they're terrorists. I mean, he actually said this. So they're sending up trial balloons now the, uh, to actually use the National Defense Authorization Act on the American people. And as you said, for decades, and I've studied the history, it's, it's true what you're saying, Hitler, the British, all of it, used their concentration camp models and their city lockdown models that they've used in Fallujah and Iraq and other areas was all beta tested here. And now isn't it fitting in a sick way that everything that was pioneered here in the United States is now going to come back on everybody? On everybody. And that's why I mentioned that famous saying about D.C., a country founded on D.C. will die by D.C. And this country, you know, it's a dis very disparate country. You have the South, you have New England, you have the Mid-Atlantic states, you have the Great Lakes, you have Texas, you have the Southwest, the West Coast, the Northern Plains, the Southern Plains, et cetera, et cetera. We have a very disparate country that's far from really being unified as a nation state because of our lack of culture. Now, when we have a lack of culture, there goes the value system. And the value system in America is one of convenience. Everyone in America will do anything for convenience. Like your apples, you know, you own about five different kinds of computers that you can carry around on your person, that's ridiculous. I've seen them in the airplanes, you know, they carry out, they have an iPhone, they have a, a, a book, they have a Kindle book, it's, and, they, and then their computer, it's, it's, it's crazy. This, this country of convenience, they will allow this country to do anything against the constitution and then they opt for convenience. Well, we do have, and I, and I really, really, really am afraid for Ron Paul because he's the only one talking about the Constitution and the best parts of it, by the way. And he's, if he, if the miracle happens and the American people wake up and they nominate him, they're going to get rid of him just like they did the Kennedys and everyone else that allegedly a single assassin takes care of, going all the way back to Abraham Lincoln. Russell, let me ask you a question from your historical research and just your you know, gut sense for things that's proven accurate. You know, you're somebody that stood up to tyranny. You, you know, you've actually done more than just occupy a square. You physically occupied your own land and faced the federal attacks. Uh, knowing this system, what's going to happen when a culture that sold their soul for convenience, for bread and circus football, who thinks it can't happen here, what's going to happen when the bottom completely drops out and the big banksters are offshore laughing about it? What is going to happen to the average person who, who is very soft and who doesn't have a culture? They have this plastic corporate culture that blows with the wind. I mean, if we had 7 million people, major university studies have shown, that starved to death or died uh, from complications from malnourishment in the 10 years of the Great Depression, and 90% of people then were self-sufficient, 
only 10% were totally urban and unself-sufficient. Now we have the flip, 90% are urban and unself-sufficient. Of the 10% that are in the country, only 5% are self-sufficient. I mean, this sounds like a beyond road warrior scenario if things really do collapse like it looks like they are, and we see government and corporations racing around, digging in, and preparing for war with the people. What are they planning? You know, it's estimated that the big cities of America have about three to four days of food for the populace three to four days. Now, with America approaching chaos, absolute chaos, and it can't feed itself because it can't afford the imports any longer. It can't afford to, to buy anything. What we're going to be done, what is going to be done is this is the most well-armed country in the world. Those guns are going to be used on each other and against law enforcement. It's just, it's going to be, that's what chaos is. Exactly. It's, it's going to be a country that's in rebellion and they don't even know why they're in rebellion. That's what the sad part of what's coming as I see it. Uh, it's rebellion because they've lost their convenience. Is it rebellion because they've lost their self-sufficiency? It's all of the above, but without a value system, it's going to be chaos. Wow, very well said. In fact, you've really crystallized it for myself. People are just going to attack in all directions while the engineers of this sit offshore and kind of let us burn each other out. That's what they've done in Latin America. I've read the IMF World Bank documents where they say, we'll let them riot for a year. They'll beg for us to come in with the military later. So how do we use the chickens coming home to actually wake people up to go after the real threat, uh, these corporate kleptocrats, instead of all of us just killing each other? I mean, how do we do that, Russell? You know, I've watched... America go from where young people like when I was in grade school wanting to be a, grow up to be a policeman to where now every citizen is deathly afraid of the police. The police themselves have transformed and, and into this, this agent of destruction and they enjoy the persecution of individuals, like you see what happened in Syria. It's happening here. So I do believe, <clears throat> just like in Syria, that's this is what we're going to see in America, except America's well armed. Yes, I mean, we saw millions of guns sold in the month of December. I mean, if even just a few percentage points of the 180 million people now that own guns use them, I mean, there's, it's going to be, it's going to be watching us eat each other alive, basically. I'm really afraid for America. I'm not afraid for myself. You know, these concentration camps they call Indian reservations. Uh, by the way, that's another show because this is legally Indian reservation, federally recognized Indian reservations in America are still on the books as prisoner war camps. And that technically, on the books of America, we're still in a state of war with the United States government. And how that came about was a, a lawyer friend at Guantanamo defending or trying to defend one of those uh, uh, so-called terrorists. Um, and might be a terrorist, I don't know. But the point being, he research in his research found out that Guantanamo was taken from Indian policy. So I and my friend, another my younger brother, he's a lawyer, we went and researched even further into uh, Pentagon files, et cetera, and found out that technically we're prisoner of war camps on these Indian reservations. That explains why we don't do not have constitutional rights. So 
what is going to happen is all these areas, and you know they got the FEMA camps and, 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 and everything else, they're prepared. They're prepared to get the survivors off to the prisoner of war camp. And then the docile few that are left will will get in line for their uh, for their jobs in a society that no longer is built on convenience. Well, you said it, and, and, and that is the system, as much as I don't want to believe that, the system, the controllers are, are, are building their entire architecture, their entire stance is built around a total collapse, and they're the ones pulling the trigger to do it while telling the poor sheep that they're there wanting to keep them safe and take care of them. It is monstrous what they're attempting to do. Uh, I want to shift gears now into uh, your health. I mean, I've been watching the videos that you've been doing, uh, your updates. We've been posting them on my YouTube channel and at Infowars.com. And I'm excited to you know, see you getting better and better and better and better. And I mean, I saw an update you did a few weeks ago, and you look even better and sound better uh, than then. Uh, Russell, I mean, are you 100% cured? And how did you do it when they told you, you know, basically you didn't have any hope at the, at the regular doctors? Well, my wife had a tremendous amount to do with it. She's the miracle worker. She saved my life. But we used alternative medicines that are only available in three states. Alternative cancer treatments are illegal in 47 of the 50 states. The only three, of course, as you know, is Nevada, Utah, and Arizona. Well, we found alternative methods that uh, naturopathic doctors who study the insides of the human body for the same length of time as MDs, medical doctors. So these naturopathic doctors we consulted. We also went to an oncologist who does tomotherapy. He's the only one in the United States does tomotherapy on a regular basis, full time. When that is the lifesaver, by the way, because it's a laser-like machine that only kills uh, cancer cells, not good cells. See, radiation, when they throw it on you, it kills good cells, more good cells than cancer cells. So we went with him for uh, laser treatment, and we went, and then, of course, to my own people, both in Mexico, Canada, and in, on different reservations in, in uh, America, and we got Indian medicine. Now, my oncologist and the naturopathic have asked just exactly what it was. Well, my wife is going to write a book on our six-month journey defeating cancer because I'm, as you know, I completely defeated it, including lung cancer. I had two separate cancers, the esophageal cancer of the tongue and throat and the lymph nodes and the neck, and then I have a separate cancer in the lungs. Wow. We got through it. But the worst thing is what we found out that this country, it's a mass, mass conspiracy to make American people sick, sick and dying. Well, as you said, it, it, I mean, with the American Indians, with the sterilization, the bad meat, the, the uh, blankets with the smallpox, with the British officers' manuals, I mean, this is all on record. It's been duplicated everywhere uh, all over the world and expanding on that. I mean, for those that don't know who just are watching for the first time or may have heard in the newspapers all over the country that you had cancer, it was big news. Now that you've beaten it, it's not big news, and, and it should be because of the conspiracy, the, you know, the money they make off killing you. You had gotten where you couldn't even talk. I mean, tell people how bad it was. I mean, you, you lost all that weight in a matter of weeks. I mean, it was amazing. Tell that story briefly. Well, I lost a pound a day for 65 days. That was the average. I lost 65 pounds in less than two months. And... What happened is that I, I just couldn't eat, and I didn't want to eat, no matter what was happening. And of course, uh, after I was diagnosed, all energy left me. And so we went to the uh, naturopathic doctors. We started getting uh, intravenous uh, blood work done, which... Uh, they extract uh, about a third of a quart of blood 
from you. They clean it of toxins and heavy metals, and then they inject oxygen, uh, mistletoe, and, and vitamin C, which all kill uh, cancer cells. And they used other supplements that I took. But the biggest help in, in all of the doctors, naturopathic and the oncologists, they want to know uh, what kind of Indian medicine. They're the only ones. The whole world hasn't, hasn't come to our door. It's, it's, it's amazing how this whole thing has been kept silent. But man, have we found out the vast conspiracy in every aspect of American industry, you know, the pharmaceutical, the uh, military, the medical, it, the government. It's to disease us up and then sell us the drugs. The drugs are what make you weak and keep the recurrence of, of cancer coming back. All those and I took them for a while, sugar diabetes pills, uh, coronary, uh, uh, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis pills, hypertension pills. What, those are made of chemicals that the human body cannot process adequately or, 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 or even definitively. Oh, yeah, the additives in the food that they allow them to put in are, I mean, look at diabetes, cancer. The United States leads the world. And I've seen studies where people 50 years ago ate all the fat, the unhealthy food, and, and weren't fat. It, it's all the additives that are making people swollen with water uh, because of the toxins, and they know exactly what they're doing. I mean, I personally finally, uh, you know, watching you with, you know, cancer and others, I finally went ahead and started getting off totally, you know, the processed stuff, taking real vitamins and minerals. I've lost 37 pounds. I, I mean, by eating nothing processed, I mean, it's almost instant. And it really is true that the system, McDonald's and others, in the foaming agents and their McNuggets, and I wasn't eating that, it, they're allowed to put silicone in it, Russell. I mean, uh, well, it's incredible. It's only 40% only of a hamburger is, is meat. The rest is hooves, it's cow manure, it's sores from the hides and the muscles. It's, it's oh my God, it's gristle. Uh, what they put in the hamburger is, 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 should be illegal. Wow. But I mean, here you are just progressively, I mean, you're cured then. I mean, I mean you look better than before you had cancer. Right. I'm, I'm back to my fighting weight, man, when I used to box. <laughs> Well, congratulations on that. We've had your website up during the interview, and I, and hopefully this can be uh, you know the next of many interviews. Uh, you know, now that you're back, I was uh, you know we, we all prayed for you on the radio as well, and um, I I know your supporters around the country did, and you know you cannot deny. Uh, I mean, I know there's studies out there that people's prayers also help. Right. Now, uh, in the final announcement, I'd like to say this that no matter what Obama says or anyone else in the country about what's happening in the international community, it's a lie. The American people now are being told nothing and everything about lies. It's really a pathetic government we have here now. And we've got to do something about it. I agree with you. Uh, I mean, what are some of your ideas to, to uh, I mean, I think the public's starting to wake up now that we're getting pure lies. Well, first of all, if you, if you reelect anybody, you're, you're a masochist at the very best. But what, what, has, what has to happen, aside from that, is occupy senators' office, offices, local and national, uh, occupy D.C., do something that will get America's attention and use it and use the facts, the facts you hear on this, this show, the facts you hear from all over the web. We've got to start acting like Americans. Separately, a few little uh, other issues I want to get your view on. Here's SOPA, where they're openly trying to restrict free speech. Uh, here's top Obama people we covered in the news earlier openly saying start shutting down the conspiracy theorist with alternative medicine, people criticizing vaccines. 
They say arrest us. I mean, they know that people are really starting to get wise to them. I believe they do, and they're panicking. And, and, and in panic, they're going to make mistakes. And we better start really being attuned to what's going around us and quit watching those networks, uh, ABC, CBS, and NBC. It's, it's, it's pathetic what they're putting out. You know, Russell, something's happening here, and I want to get your uh, view on this while we have you. I have been conscious to the eugenics, the population reduction, the poisoning. I have the documents. You have the documents. They're all out there, not just for uh, uh, American Indians, but, but I mean, people all over the world, this system is being used against. And even though I was conscious of it, until the last few months, I hadn't even put what I knew into action. And I think it's that separate you know, system of Russell Means is awake and knows the system can't be trusted. But you've got a local doctor who means well, who's compartmentalized. They're saying take all these pills, so you take them. I'm the same way. I know that you know the GMO's poison, but then I don't do all I can to stay away from it. You know, there's a difference between, and I want your take on this because I don't, I don't know what you call it, knowing something, but still it's almost like it's a fiction, even though you know it's true, and actually living it. You know, it's one thing to talk the talk versus walk the walk. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, very much so, because I'm a vegan. You know, I come from a what is America, which is a meat-eating culture. I'm a vegan now, and, and it's the only way to wellness. It's the only way your body can naturally fight off uh, these introductory, I mean, these forced introduction diseases. It's, uh, it's, you got to, if they did not subsidize the beef industry, for instance, or the poultry industry, or the fish industry, or the agricultural industry, food would be astronomical and we would be forced to be vegans because we'd be growing our own. And as you said, only 5% of us are self sufficient now anyway. But what I want to point out about uh, the beef industry, if the subsidization, and this is how much taxes, your taxes, everyone's taxes are going towards just the beef industry alone. If you took away those subsidies, a steak would cost $90 in the supermarket, and a pound of hamburger would cost $35. My God. And the chickens are starting to come home to roost. Uh, well, uh, Russell, thank you so much. Uh, for joining us. And again, I look forward to speaking to you again in the future. And we're really glad to see you uh, back and uh, better. And it's certainly a testament uh, to uh, stuff that they call alternative medicine, that in so many cases, the system is trying to suppress because it's the real treatments. It's uh, not the alternative. And we won't get a chance to talk to you, I know, for a while. Anything else you'd like to tell the audience out there? Just what I've just always been saying every time I'm with you, we got to do something and, and do it fast. All right, Russell, I want to say bye to you right at the end. I'm going to end the show and come back and say bye to you privately, okay, my friend? All right, my friend. All right, great. Well, folks, that's it uh, for uh, that powerful interview here on InfoWars Nightly News. I'm going to play some excerpts of this in the next few days, also on the syndicated radio show that airs 12 noon uh, Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, uh, 9 a.m. Uh, uh, Pacific. Uh, but... Uh, you can also go to YouTube and watch for free. It's also posted here at PrisonPlanet.tv. Welcome to the reservation, hour-long documentary we did uh, with uh, Russell Means that we put out for folks to actually get what Russell really stands for, not what the uh, corporate-controlled media says he stands for. Very interesting fella and uh, one of a kind, certainly. Okay, that's it for this edition. Great job to the crew, and hopefully we'll see you back here tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central.